Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. You're watching the program in the shades of the Quran and our today's topic for discussion is etiquette of reading the Quran. The phone lines are open now. If you do have any questions concerning this topic, by all means, use the you can use the number appearing at the bottom of your TV screen and our Sheikh, respected Sheikh, present with us in the studio, will be more than happy to answer any of your questions. We would encourage if you can ask any question related to the topic, that would be in the best interest of the program. And of course, we will learn more from our respected guest. Um, before we move on to the break, Sheikh, we were discussing about the important factors such as the tahara and other manners. What is the next important etiquette straight after tahara? Jazakallah. Welcome to everyone again. Uh, before answering the question, could I, can I just uh, track back a little bit Please. about the, the question that we were discussing earlier about tahara, just to summarize it. What I said earlier is that uh, for the ladies in that particular situation, uh, the consensus is that they cannot touch the Quran. Also, the consensus is that they can read parts of the Quran which are like a zikr, like Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, okay. like Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Surah, like Surah, Surah, small Surah, or Ayatul Kursi, etc. This is also a matter of consensus, you know, co um, consensus, and therefore uh, there is no difference in this. So, these are two things. Only difference of opinion is found in whether a large amount of the Quran, for example, a full surah, you know, a full para, or all of the Quran, or a large amount of the Quran, whether they can read it um, for sawab without touching and looking at the Quran or from their memory. That is the point in which there is in which is dis disputed. Um, I had a concerned question yeah. about it. When you say looking at the Quran today, we know the technology is improved. What about if the Quran is there on our computer? Can we still read it? Yes, that's a, that's a relevant question. So let, let me finish with this. Uh, the other other question. So okay. hopefully the, the, this question is clear okay. to our uh, to our uh, you know viewers and listeners. Uh, so the, 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 the disputed the controversial area is reading the large amount of the Quran. Quran. Okay. So majority until now a majority view and particularly in our Indi indian subcontinental you know uh, communities is that they cannot but there are uh, scholarly opinions uh, like Sheikh ibn baz and ibn taymi etc they 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 see that this is all right mm -hmm. you know, so that's what i wanted to say secondly now the you know the complementary question mm -hmm. about uh, the uh, touching uh, the gadgets or the machines that have the Quran. That's not a problem because um, the Quran, uh, what we have in our memory, what we have in, uh, in other books, you know, uh, like Tafsir or what we have in, in, uh, in small machines like mobile and computer, uh, that is called not, uh, that's not called Mus'haf. Mm -hmm. You know, there is one thing called Mus'haf in in arabic mushaf is that particular shape of the quran that you know we have in a book form uh, you know between the two covers uh, that is called mushaf and it is touching or not touching that mushaf which is in question mm -hmm. now if the quran part of it or the all of it even is found somewhere else like in a machine in a computer in mobile phone then obviously that's not a mushaf and therefore touching it is not a question, it's, it's fine. Also, uh, Quran, other books containing parts of the Quran, like Tafsir or any other Islamic book that has, you know, parts of the Quran written in it, inside it, <coughs> whether touching that is okay. The criteria there is that if the Quran, the, the part, you know, I mean, in other, if, if if the book contains most of it is a Quran, and the majority are ayats of the Quran or parts of the Quran, then yes, it will take the rule about the Quran itself, about the Mus'haf itself, and therefore touching it is not permissible. If the other way around, you know, if like in a book of Tafsir, you know, Tafsir, uh, if the uh, words of the Mufassir is more than the amount of the Quran, then it's fine. You know, touching it is all right. So they can touch it and everybody can touch it. Um, if they are, you know, equal, 
parts of the Quran and parts of uh, translation, uh, translation or, or yeah. tafsir is, is equal, then uh, the impermissibility of touching will take precedence. That is, you know, it is better and, and that it will take the role of uh, impermissibility and therefore uh, it, will, it, it is not permissible to touch. So these are some of the complementary questions. Coming back to the question as to what other important manners we need to apply and we need to adopt when we read the Quran. Obviously, tahara is the most important. Purity is the most important. Next to purity comes the reading of A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, which mm. is called Ta'awuz in Arabic or Isti'adah. Because the Quran, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So, at least reading, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ once is also fard, is an obligation. So, whenever we start the reading the Quran, we need to read, first of all, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And reading Bismillah, Basmala, as called Basmala, it's not fard, but it is a sunnah. And it is a strong, a strong recommendation. So we add "A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem" and then we say "Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim." So these are, this is, I can say that after uh, tahara, cleanliness, this is the next one in terms of importance. Then there are many etiquette. There are many manners. There are many things which are all, you know, mustahabat recommendations, strong recommendations, and fit for the position, the status of Al-Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are those? For example, reading the Quran, even though I don't understand it, even though I don't understand the whole of the Quran, I need to read the Quran in a state of calm and quietness with the peace of mind. So, uh, the Quran, Imam Zarkashi, one of the earlier scholars of you know Quran, uh, mentioned uh, in his book Al Burhan fi Al Quran that there are three stages when we read the Quran in terms mm -hmm. of reflection and calmness and quietness of our mind, you know, concentration and focus. That the first thing is one would understand, one would take the uh, the look or attitude that, well, you know, I'm reading the Quran and therefore I'm knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So just knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and what, uh, what his attributes are and what he's, say, what he's saying, mm -hmm. that's the first stage. That's the very simple, very simple stage, very preliminary stage. The second stage is one needs to behave or take the attitude that as if as if he is talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when reading the Quran when reading the Quran mm -hmm. and the third is which is the which is the biggest the highest as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is conversing with him with the with the reciter the reader of the Quran so you can understand it yeah so three stages so first thing, simple for everybody. The second one, yes, I am as if I am talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And third one, as if Allah himself is talking to me. It's like the, the salah, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, أَنْ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously, there is one level, you know, just very simple, very ordinary level. But then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, as if you are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if not, if you cannot reach that point, then at least assume in your behavior, at least show in your behavior and attitude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing you. You are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is seeing you. So this is the, this is the uh, very important etiquette, manner of reading the Quran. Reflection when reading the Quran. Reading the Quran also slowly, and the Quran reading has three speeds. 
you know, again, three speeds. Very slow, medium speed, and very high speed. Okay, interesting. All these three speeds can be applied in when reading the Quran. Uh, Imam Sakhawi, again, one of the earlier scholars, uh, said that the Quran is read for three purposes. Hmm? Just for reflection and just un an understanding and then getting rewards. You know. So if you are reading for reflection, then read it slowly. If you are reading it to learn, then you know, read it medium in, 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 medium, in a medium pace and uh, intermittently stop and read and, st you know, learn and stop, learn and stop, because that's, that's th that way is more suitable for learners. Okay. Yeah. You know? If you are reading it on your own, just for reflection and understanding it, then obviously you do it in your own pace. If you are a learner, if you're a learner, then learn and stop, learn a little bit and then stop, then go, then go, then go. But if you are reading it just for the purpose of getting reward, then read it with a high speed so that, you know, you can get the most, you can make the most in, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a least amount of time. Mm. So th that's, that's, it. that's another uh, etiquette of mannerism of reading the Quran. But whatever it is, whether you read it in a high speed, you read it in a medium speed, or read it in a, uh, in a low space or low speed, one has to make sure that one reads the Quran correctly. One reads the Quran correctly. Uh, so that's number uh, two. Uh, the next one. The next one is also to read the Quran, if possible, uh, sitting uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a quiet place and preferably on a musalla and facing the direction of Qibla. That's the important That's factor. Well, this is not a matter, this is not a must, but okay. as I said, menace, menace, the more mannerism you can bring in to, res to show your respect and to create an atmosphere uh, that actually befits the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calmness, quietness, focus, concentration, you know, all this. The better, the more you can do, the better. But I do have a complimentary question on yeah. that because we live in a very fast-paced world yeah. and time is a very big factor. Yeah. We noticed early mornings when we use the tube or buses, people yeah. do often, we see, reading the Quran while on their journey. Yeah. Is, is, this, is this a correct, what is the ruling regarding this? Well, um, the Quran can be read like a zikr, like a remembrance, like any other zikr. Okay. Any other zikr. Uh, what we need to, so the Quran can be read while you are walking, when you are in your car, when you are on journey, when you are at work, you know, when you're at home and things like that in the morning, in the afternoon, okay. in the evening, like that. What we are talking about is the most ideal situation, most ideal. When you have time, when you have time when you're at, at home, you are not at work and you have ample and enough time, then you read it with that kind of atmosphere, you know, created. However, that doesn't mean that in other situations, as you said, the other situations of the Quran, reading the Quran <laughs> is not permissible. No, it's not. However, one thing we must make sure that when we read the Quran, when we are, you know, on the move, or we listen to the Quran when we are on the move, then at least we need to make sure that we are listening to the Quran. Many, uh, many, time, many a time it happens, many time it happens. Just, I mean, it, it should not be the case that the Quran is a pastime. The Quran is made as a pastime. Like, you know, uh, we, when we are on a car, we're on the journey, uh, just I'm fe perhaps feeling bored, and I just turned on my, my, my uh, what do you call it, CD, CD player, players, CD yeah. player and uh, start listening to energy. Okay. So I listen or not, you know, I'm listening or talking to somebody. 
that's not how the Quran is to be treated. If the Quran accepts for the Quran when you are on the move, when you are at home, when you are at work, etc., uh, just do not, just turning it on just as a sort of, you know, pastime and as a sort of, uh, as, a, as a sort of way of, killing uh, the time, you know, killing the time or uh, getting rid of certain pressures and certain okay. stress. I, I don't think, you know, uh, Quran as a book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to be put in that so sort of situation. So the important factor yeah. is the concentration must That's be right. there. Yes. Since yeah. you have mentioned about listening to the Quran, yeah. while listening we do notice that there are sajda tilawat. We do yeah. have um, verses where it requires prostration. Yeah. So if someone knows that a particular yeah. verse has been recited and it requires yeah. sajda, yeah. what should one do at that particular moment? Well, if the situation allows, you are at home and uh, uh, or in a, in a, in a place where, uh, you know, you can do the sajda uh, r uh, right after uh, you have done the reading, you have done talawa, then please you know, do it. So one uh, needs to do it in that sort of situation, one must do it. If situation doesn't allow, you can delay it until when you know, you are in a situation where you can do it. So, as far as Sajjah Tilawat is concerned, both ways are allowed, are permissible, doing it uh, right at that moment or delaying it. It is better to do it right after the Tilawa if you are in a position to do so. Even then, you can delay it, uh, but remember, you know, Tilawa, Sajjah Tilawa is a wajib, and therefore, if you are uh, if you are delaying it and you forgot it, then uh, a, 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 an obligation remained uh, on, your, on your part to be done. And therefore, ideal situation is to do it right at the moment so that you don't forget it. Jazakallah, Sheikh. Yeah. Dear viewers, we are having a very interesting discussion over here. So if you do have any questions related to the topic or confusions or doubt, please feel free to use the number which is appearing at the bottom of your TV screen where my guests will be more than happy to answer any questions. Sheikh, you have discussed about, um, the, you have used the term Indian subcontinent region. Now, we do observe a lot when it comes to reading the Qur'an. Before we open the Qur'an, there's a tendency to kiss the Qur'an and place between one's eyes. Hmm. What is the ruling concerning this issue? Well, um, the Qur'an, you see, there is an, the, the, the related to this is another question. Uh, which way of reading the Quran is more rewarding? From okay. your hips, from your memory, or from looking? Looking, okay. Looking at the Quran. Physically looking, Physically looking okay. at the Quran. <laughs> uh, obviously, these are very, uh, these are questions which are not of the kind of obligation, obligatory. It know, doesn't fall under the category, the category of, of obligations. obligations. That you must do it, you must do that. It's more to do with how best, how best, you know, uh, we can uh, treat and behave with the Quran. What is the best, you know, to get the best out of the Quran, uh, either as a, as, a, as a reward or uh, as, a, as a benefit in other, you know, areas of our life. So, the Quran, it is said that the Quran, by looking at the Quran, rather than from your hips, from your memory, uh, gives you more reward. And there are practices uh, of the Sahabis, of the companions, and later, you know, scholars, Salaf al-Salihin, you know, saintly people, uh, that they used to look at the Quran when they read. Not only that, but there are uh, narrations uh, that uh, some of the Sahabis, they, once they have finished reading the Quran, they kept on looking at the Quran for a while before they close it. But without reading, just without have a reading, glance at yes. it. Okay. So it is, it is just to show your emotion and your emotional touch and connectivity with the Quran, with your, with your mind uh, and body, you know, with your hearts and with your thoughts and with your minds. So, yes, 
the the question you asked was can you repeat the question again the the question was the kissing the quran yes, and placing yes. in one's eyes because yes. we do notice that placing very placing common. the as i said placing the 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 eye when the reading the quran is better than okay. not placing it as for kissing there is no harm there is no harm, no harm. there are but does know, it fall under the category uh, of etiquette it, uh, yes i mean the etiquettes as i said earlier that, uh, uh, at the beginning that there are uh, most important etiquette which one must do so tahara is the most important in other words tahara is an obligation doing a'udhu billah reading a'udhu billah mm -hmm. is an obligation so other than these the 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 next you know all other etiquettes they are of the category of you know good and better and best so if you do it is good the more you do the better you know the most you do the best it's better yeah. okay now you mentioned in your discussion that uh, place and time yeah. is there any particular time that is considered to be the best when it comes to reading or reciting the holy quran yes um the first of all i must again say and reiterate this and repeat this that people our viewers uh need to know that these points that we're talking about uh these are the points good and better points okay not better not points there's nothing that negative or bad into it okay so, so the more the better you know the more they do the better reward they can attract and they can have so um the, the uh, so the blessed the best time to read the, the quran best time. best time to read the, the quran because time, you yes. did mention in discussion yeah. so the quran is to be read and i think we'll have to stop day. it there there is a caller with us waiting yeah. us on the line yeah. um let's take the call assalamu alaikum caller uh, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, just one question. I just yes, please to go ask. ahead. Um, you know, when we read the Quran in English to understand, and when you actually, um, you have to do the sajda, you know, like certain, when you go to certain verses, can you do it when you finish completely the Quran, or do you have to do it, you know, when you're supposed to do it? Uh, um, when I put the phone down... Can okay, I but before that, I just had a quick question. What do you mean for completely finish the Qur'an? You mean the complete uh, finishing Khatun. the... Yeah, Khatun. basically finish the whole 30 paras. Whole 30, and okay. Do, and do yeah? the search that all together. We got your questions. Okay, okay. can I okay. just... When I put the phone down, if you can answer it, please. Please, please. Okay, thank, thank you, you Thank you, thank you very much, Assalamu sister, for your call. Mashallah, it's a very interesting question. Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, and thanks to the sister uh, to... Uh, ask this question uh, and, and, and also thanks thanks to her to watch this program um, I think in our discussion we answered this question uh, although we did touch about yeah, it but obviously our question yeah. is yeah. to do the such that after the completion that means she all together all the such that can do it I said the best way is to do each such in its time so altogether there are 14 sajda in the quran in the quran yeah so each sajda in its own time in its time following so when you say in its own immediately time immediately while we are reciting yeah. the ayat of yeah. sajda yeah. straight away then straight just when you finish the reading of the ayah of sajda just stop reading and do the sajda that's the best way that's okay. the best way but this sajda can be delayed and as say this is the sister said uh, that can she do it after finishing the, the whole, whole quran. quran reading Yes, she can do it. She can do it. But uh, the be I mean, which one is the better then? The better is the better is to straight do away. Is straight, straight away. away. Okay. Straight away. Yeah. But even if she does it after completing after the yes, Quran, yes, she can do it. She can do it. Okay. Jazakallah. Thank you very much, sister, for your beautiful question. Yeah. We were discussing about the best time for reading the Quran. Yeah. And you were saying, wh is it before? Yeah. Well, uh, as I said, the rule is that the Quran is to be read. Uh, so long as is the Quran is not like uh, you know uh, Salah which is uh, forbidden in three times as we know it so the Quran can be read and should be read in all si in all time in all exactly. situations however there are certain times uh, which are better uh, to read the Quran in and which will hopefully bring more reward as well 
which one, uh, the, the, the one of the best time to read the Quran is after the Salatul Fajr. Okay, straight after the Fajr. Fajr. Okay. After Salatul Fajr. Another time is between Maghrib and Isha. Okay. Mm. Another time is uh, probably by far the best time is the end of the night. Is it Tahajjud? Tahajjud. Tahajjud time, okay. I mean, the Quran uh, obviously can be read on its own without Salah, outside Salah, but doing it inside Salah, and I'm talking about the Fard, you know, obligatory ones. Obligatory, obligatory ones, salah. obviously, mm -hmm. we have to. <coughs> but I'm talking about nafl, the additional ones, the, the, optional. Voluntary, the optional, the voluntary, uh, the, the Salah that we do particularly the tahajjud one, mm -hmm. the one that at the, the end of the night, with just before you know, the, uh, just before Fajr, uh, in the uh, you know, last th third of the, uh, the night. It is better to read the Quran, you know, when, 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 when one is uh, doing the tahajjud. Obviously, doing or reading a large amount of Quran in tahajjud means that one has to be a good, you know, hafiz, if not all of it, then perhaps, you know, a good amount of Quran needs to be uh, learned by heart. But that said, uh, that said, if one cannot do it, then one can choose these times after Fajr, you know, mm -hmm. and between Maghrib and Isha, or any other time, according to uh, one's uh, availability and one's uh, own situation, you know, availability of time. Uh, there are hadiths in which the Prophet uh, uh, there is a, a hadith, uh, Amr ibn al-As, you know, a Sahabi was who was young, and this hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim, that he was very enthusiastic, very energetic, you know, and was very young. And he asked the Prophet ﷺ, oh Prophet ﷺ, you know, in how many days, you know, at least uh, in how many days I can read the Quran, all of it. He said, yeah, I was it. going to come to that question. We did ever yeah. discuss about this Khatm yeah. al-Quran. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. So, is there any recommended said, period within which a person has to complete the whole Quran? Uh, because obviously in a month of Ramadan, yeah, uh, I think the, 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 there are also whole lots of questions, you know, uh, about the etiquettes of Khatm al Quran. Uh, okay, that's a big, big yeah. subject in itself. So big su subject in itself. So the question we were discussing as to uh, what is the you know uh, best time mm -hmm. for reading the Quran. So I said after Fajr, between Maghrib and Isha, and you know, at the last part of the night. But I do have a complimentary question. If it's the last part of the night or after Fajr, yeah. there are chances that one may, might feel sleepy or a little bit tired or wants mm. to go to the bed. Yeah. So in that situation, even though he wants to read the Quran, mm. but his, his body is actually tired or he's feeling sleepy, what should if he do? Uh, he, he should, he or she should take rest first. Rest first, okay. Yeah. So rest takes the precedence yes, here. Yes, rest takes the precedence there. And there are hadiths in, in which the Prophet ﷺ directed his sahabis and companions that, you know, your body has, your, has a right. Uh, even your family has a right. Mm -hmm. And all other those, you know, the, just reading the Quran as a, as a nafl act or additional act of ibadah, uh, it, it depends on your situation. Uh, doing a nafal ibadah. Islam is, you know, Sharia ah is, 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 is so balanced, you know. And it asks and requires all of us to identify and to know our priorities, you know. At a time when you need to be at work, you know, to earn your livelihood, <laughs> <laughs> to earn for yourself, for your, for your family. At a time when your children need your attention, your wife needs your attention. Uh, Give them preference, give them preference. I mean, just do not sit around uh, with the Quran reading, uh, just for the reading of the Quran. Yes, so the Quran reading has its own time. So in other so words, we cannot force ourselves no, to no. read the Quran. And if you need yourself, you need time and space for yourself. You need to take rest. You haven't slept well, you need to sleep. Even, you know, during the end of the, uh, at, the, at, the, at the end time, you know, at the end of the night, 
uh, there are hadiths you know the prophet uh, said that uh, if you feel that you need to take rest you have on completed your sleep and you feel like sleepy go and sleep so it all depends on how actually how you manage and how you know I, it all depends on you know our insight our insight and our intuition our intuition our own instinct and our sense of prioritization as to you know how and when to do what okay second lecture we were discussing about the khatm al quran issue yeah. so the question i asked earlier is the recommended is there any recommended time frame that within which a person must complete the whole quran because we know in ramadan people are aiming for at least once if not twice or thrice some people maybe even four times yeah. uh, four times in the whole month so yeah. is there any particular time frame or the or time period that a person mm. can aim for in order to finish the whole quran yes there are time frames but again they are not a must it's not a must okay. it's not a must uh, doing the khatm al quran you know reading all of the all of it even you know it, it, this is also you know not a must it all depends on what you do when you do and how your own situation is in a normal situation the recommendation is uh, that i mean the most uh, most sahabi is most companions and in some hadiths uh, reported from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well it's seven days seven days seven days seven days uh, there are hadith references in so hadith so it's a one week one week, one week. you know okay. the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did it in one week um, some you know the uh, companions and later scholars later past the past people you know they all uh, they they used to do it in seven days but that said again i must i must reiterate i must repeat that this is not a must 30 days and that is why the quran has been divided in 30 parts 30 juz mm. in order to um, complete the khatm of it in 30 days but there are hadiths 20 days you know 15 days 7 uh, days and there is one hadith that in in, in which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked uh, one of the companions not to do it in less than 3 days less than 3 not yes. less okay from from there the ulama infer ulama infer that doing some ulama some some okay. ulama that sorry sheikh i left to interrupt you there yeah. because we've, we've been told that there's a caller in the line yeah. yeah. assalamu alaikum caller hello hello assalamu alaikum caller wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam yes yes please go ahead with the question assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh yes please go ahead with your question uh, uh, question to share please go ahead uh, the think who read quran to understand mm. and for the purpose of learning mm-hmm. and also read the quran for the purpose of for spiritual things but uh, the way we should behave with the reading to learn the quran like tell this and when we actually l- uh, i mean perfect in learning then we read the quran for the purpose of spiritual things but is there any cultural barrier to behave with the reading of the quran quran um, when we actually learning and understand did you get the question we are read for the understanding of the quran Uh, can I ask can I stop you there what, what do you mean by cultural barrier cultural barrier that means say as the country in the indo parts of continent when we actually sit down with the quran we have to sit nicely but in this country while sitting while physical body or touching it doesn't actually matter in in, in other cultures they will not actually for other as for example they will sit in a chair and the chair wala a, a young person can put a feet on the top of the table but still he can hold the, the holy quran and read for a uh, reading not the purpose not for the purpose of well spiritual thing but only for the purpose of learning the concept and understanding the main things so okay. i think if the sheikh actually give more clarifications on this issue then i hope 
Who is the viewer will be more benefited. Okay. Jazakallah. Yeah, Jazakallah for your valuable question. But it's time for a short break. Inshallah, I'll give, um, we'll answer the question when we come back from, from our break. Um, so, um, we'll ha I think we'll have to go for a break. And then when we come back yeah, from break, yeah. we'll give the yeah. answer. Dear viewers, Inshallah, let's go for a short break. When we come back, we'll be continuing our discussion and, of course, answer this particular viewer's f f phone call. Assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. 